Good afternoon. Oh. Now, some people are taking oh. antidotes to all the uh, high living that they might have done last night and mixing Bloody Marys and whatnot. We give you an antidote to Lawrence Welk. <laughs> some oh. of the finest music anywhere today. Liquid, smooth, professional, eloquent, exquisite. It is the music, you know, modern jazz music, that has raised an entire generation and provides the comfort and the sustenance when all the world seems to be going wrong. Jazz is not something I grew up with, you know. It was I rock did. and roll and whatnot. And, and I've heard a lot you? about jazz dying, reviving, reviving, dying. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Are we in? I don't even want to talk about whether <laughs> we're in a revival now, but I am in a revival, if you like. I'm learning jazz. I guess as a, re as a, a reaction against the acid rock and all the raucousness of rock music, there's a return <coughs> in a lot of forms, a lot of media, and films and all sorts of things, to beauty, to, uh, to cl classical sorts of things. And Paul Desmond represents probably uh, as vividly as anyone that um, exquisite expression of what you feel, musicians feel, that developed in the 1950s and mostly on the west coast of the United States, so-called uh, west coast uh, cool jazz. And he's playing now with uh, largely west coast Canadian uh, band. Paul Desmond was with the Brubeck Quartet, Dave, Dave Brubeck, Brubeck, and right. he went into sort of semi-retirement about seven years ago, and he came out to come up to play in Canada with a guitarist by the name of Ed Bickert. They cut a beautiful, beautiful album called Pure Desmond. So and nice that you can't buy it. It's a practically a collector's yeah. item. Very yeah. hard to find. And they're playing again, or they have been recently, and, and they're going to play again together. And record it again. <clears throat> well, we've collected uh, Paul Desmond, and the band that is backing him, Ed Bickert from Vernon, B.C. on guitar, Don Thompson from Powell River on bass, Jerry Fuller on drums, Jerry's from Vancouver. We'll chat, we'll hear some music, relax, and let it all hang out, as they say. Do you, how much practice and rehearsal do you people do before you go into a club date? Uh, hardly any, as it turned out. I, this is a very sort of brave move on my part in terms of my sheltered life with the Brubeck Quartet all those years. I first came up here because I heard about Ed Bickert through Jim Hall, Ed Bickert, the guitar player, who was incredible, and Don Thompson, the bass player, also, and Jerry Fuller. So I came up here, and without any rehearsal at all, we started playing the first trip. It was, this is my third now. You just arrived. Yeah, you've been in, in the sort of retirement, or semi-retirement, since, since the Brubeck Quartet broke up. Yeah. You have. I've, I've been reading Gene Lee's. What, what made you come back, or more importantly, what made you go into retirement in the first place? Um, fatigue, uh, uh, grouchiness, a number of things. It, it sort of hit the whole group about the same time. We've been traveling for roughly 17 years in the last 10 years, uh, about 300 concerts a year, and it got to be too much. What did you do then? Uh, I just sat around for a while and did nothing. And then gradually, uh, uh, Dave got into writing his symphonic works, and I started working on a book. And uh, Gene Wright went out to the coast. Joe Morello does drum clinics. And uh, okay. we started to miss playing. So I began recording on my own. I worked some with Jim Hall, and then I started coming up here. This is the only club I've played in probably about 25 years, just so I can play with these guys. Your last album, which is beautiful, I must say that the distributors aren't uh, off the mark too much because the records aren't available anywhere. Yeah. Um, but you've got another one coming out. Yeah, it's either coming out or, depending on when this is, it will have been out shortly ago. But uh, in the club, uh, we're recording live this trip, and I'm sure we'll get an album out of it. You're very nervous right now. Why? Is it <laughs> mean? You're so no, calm no, no, when no. you're playing. Or are you calm? Is <clears throat> that just a facade? That's uh, total huge fraud, is uh, <laughs> the honest truth. You look absolutely composed, and you coax this. I know nothing about jazz. Does that distress you? Not that a I bit. should be sitting here talking to you? No, I'm delighted. From what I do know, the people that, that do know and the people that I listen to tell me that you have the sweetest sounding saxophone in the entire world. And it just seems to come out very gently. Your sound is not uh, frenetic or, or wild. Um, it's hard to believe that you ever stopped playing it. Uh, I lucked out in many ways because I really don't deserve it to, to have stuck with me. I really didn't play for about three years at all before I went back to recording. And in some ways, it may have helped. Gene Lee's on, on your last album cover wrote that uh, that you and Ed Bickert had met up and that you 
mm -hmm. came up here and you started playing with him. You played with him today. And he mentioned that you were so quiet and shy, and Ed Bickard was so abominably shy, he didn't know how you'd ever got together or could say anything to each other in the uh, first place. It took a couple of weeks before, <laughs> before we you said anything. Exchanged too many sentences, yeah. But uh, you wanted to be a writer at one time, did you? Yeah. You still want to be a writer when you grow up? Not all that much, actually, if I ever indeed do. Uh, one thing I learned during the years of not playing, I started h hanging out in a bar in New York called The Lanes, where a lot of heavyweight writers spend a lot of time. And I discovered uh, over a year or so that almost all of them have secret Walter Mitty dreams of becoming jazz players. And I figured that's a dumb move to <laughs> turn in a fairly secure place in the world of jazz for number 493 unemployed humorist. When you did um, retire, mm -hmm. or almost retire at one point, that you were able to, because of uh, a great financial setup that you and Dave Brubeck had got into, is, has, that, has that security left you now? Do you have to play? Uh, well, not really, but it isn't quite as secure as it once looked. Uh, so sort of yearly income, we but sort of squirreled away the receipts from all the concerts and everything into a fund and took it out at so much a year. And there's some that really looked terrific in 1954, it does not look all that sensational these days. And the whole thing ends, appropriately enough, in 1984. So if I'm still around for that, I'll have to go back to work anyway. Who would you like to play with now? Who are the who oh, my are favorite, your favorite guys? Are the, the, the ones you okay. either just listen to or are just about to listen to. Apart from uh, apart from Ed apart and from those people, who uh, are the other people that you like and admire in, in the jazz scene right now? Well, Jim Hall, I've always yeah. liked <clears throat> playing with him. I've made a bunch of <clears throat> records with him. Jerry Mulligan, likewise. And most of my time, of course, I spent with old Father David Brubeck. Uh, it's an album, I'm sure, which is out by now with just the two of us, mm -hmm. just duets. And as a matter of fact, they're talking about reassembling the uh, original quartet with Joe Morello and Gene Wright. Really? Are you interested in that? Yeah. They're setting up some concerts. They don't do it badly, do they? Oh. I love them. I this just love is them. A, so gentle. Do you know how good that music is? Well, I like well, it. I hate to sound sort of fatuous like that, but that is as as good of that form as yeah. you're ever going to hear in the world. It really is beautiful. Magnificent. The tragedy of it is that when they play in, in the, uh, the club, yeah. which is Bourbon Street in Toronto, and full credit to them for bringing in the players they do, it's a supper club, you know, and there's all this chatter and rattle and yelling orders and whatnot. Desmond, uh, I remember, once said that he, uh, he felt very strongly about people sitting down in front of him and ordering a full bottle, but he didn't mind drinking so much. He didn't like the eating and whatnot. This was many years ago in the 1950s and the chatter, but he didn't mind someone with a full bottle of bourbon, although we all knew what kind of people those were too that sat down at the table. But it's a difficult situation because they play so softly you can hardly hear it. It's always been the bane of almost any jazz musician I've ever yeah. heard that they always have to play mm -hmm. in clubs of some kind where liquor is served so that they can make money. Well, the booze could, but the liquor being served isn't so bad. It isn't no, as bad as the dinner's No, but even so, when liquor is served, people get a little bit yeah. high, you know, <laughs> and the higher you get, the louder they get, and the more this it interferes with any jazz. This is your era, Paul Stolz. I was reading an article about, it's printed in 1954, Time Magazine, 1954, and it was about Brubeck, and they there's a little glossary here. Of the terms. Of the that, terms, of jazz the, of, terminology. Of the new jazz yeah. terms. And the new terms included ball, for having a good time. Uh, that's having a ball. And uh, cool, relax. I cooled it at a table for a while. Cat, that's a jazz musician. Combo. Yeah, man, it uh, was a hip era, you know, uh, funky and uh, groovy. <laughs> I can dig it. You can dig it. Right? Sure. Dig. And they, all these words now have become part of the language. Well, they've almost, I suppose they have. No, yeah. they using have. the word hip, that's, you know, I'm hip or. Hipster. One who is hip. Well, that's, that's hip a was an adjective. Hipster thing. is now hep. <laughs> well, no, hipster that. is a person. I know, but hep is very unhip, very <laughs> oh, low, low. It is. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very no good at all. And, and things aren't supposed to be hot anymore. They they should be cool. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 A rich era. 
jazz is, uh, as you can tell, I guess, a language of its own. That's why those writers wanted to be jazz musicians. I got to tell you another. It's the most magnificent self-expression, personal expression. I got to tell you expression. another story about Desmond. He looks so quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. Wendy, this one of the songs we heard was named for a girl, and he said, I don't know whether I'll have to change it or not, because what'll happen when Sylvie, Barbara, Janet, and Joan find out? You get his albums. They've got names like that on all of the other cuts, if you can. A nice way to start the year, the visit yeah. with Paul Desmond. Our New Year's present to and you. And a great Canadian group with him.